Hey everybody, Brian McGough here at Hedge Eye, and we got a really special event for you today. I'm joined by my colleague Jeremy McLean, as always, my partner, um, and we have Mark Cajodes, who I don't know how many nicknames I have for Mark. He is always up to no good, and he's always telling us that on Twitter. You know, Mark, if you didn't know, sniffed out the whole FTX blow up. Um, he called that out a month in advance of it happening. Uh, that Mark, I'm going to go down on saying that's probably your biggest victory to date. Is 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 that fair, or do you have bigger ones? No, that's pretty good. But I, you know, some people call it my triple crown because we had FTX, and then we had Silvergate Bank, which banked FTX. That that went from sixty to eighteen cents. And then I had the Signature Bank as well behind that one. That one from 150, and it's now trading at a penny. It's still trading. It's a, so 160 to a penny is, I mean, actually, I got in the thing at about 130. 130 to a penny for what I do is pretty good. So those <laughs> the, those three, I think, that goes down as, as a good run. That's a good trifecta. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, that's a good one. That pays the bills um so anyway mark there. thank you thank you for joining us here um jeremy will be jumping into i'm dialing live from hedge eye chicago uh where we have our regional conference which uh, mark you've been to our conferences they're always jam-packed um so there's a lot of ideas i want to talk about that can jeremy i can I, add a, can I editorialize on something before you get going yeah let's do it so Ladies and gentlemen out there who are watching this, I think these guys are fantastic. I don't always agree with them. They don't always agree with me, but they do their level best to try to get it right. They work on the weekends, they're thinking men, and they try really hard to be top of their craft. And I think they're outstanding. They don't pay me a dime. I don't pay them a dime, but I have mad respect for these two. So you should pay attention to what they have to say. And we don't always agree. So but I, <laughs> but I just I think the world of these two. Thanks, Mark. That really means a lot um, coming from someone with your success, your tenure, your caliber. And I'm um, not and I'm not sugary either. <laughs> you're 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 a little salty, if I might say. Um, <laughs> um, so let me ask you, before we get into a couple of our favorite stocks, both long or short, um, again, some which we agree on, with you on and some which we don't. And I do understand that you do want to uh, drop some news here today for us on uh, a company that recently changed its ticker. But what is your, if we look outside the scope of retail and consumer discretionary, what do you think is the most egregiously priced security in the market right now or maybe if i rephrase that the most mispriced security now that's a good question i'm going to give you a lot to choose from up or down you know i'm short helena troy i've been short helena troy i've been short helena troy since it was a couple hundred i think it's on the road to hell and it's going to go to 20. stocks at 100. I think Trupanion, which is TRUP, I talked about at your conference at 30. They've had all sorts of executives leaves. The balance sheet's a mess. They lose money. I think the product they sell is a scam. Stock's 21. I think it goes to three. And then something recently I figured out, which I think is a complete floating crap game and a total piece of shit, is something called B. Riley, symbol R-I-L-Y. It's just a conglomeration of over leveraged shit in a brokerage firm structure where the CEO did business with a guy named Brian Kahn, who I think uh, the DOJ is going to tab and knock on his back any day now. So you can pick did he pass else. your rug test. No, neither, no one wears a wig. The guy at Helena <laughs> Troy who's leaving the CEO leaves in a month. He wears those indoor outdoor glasses. And it looks like he had his picture taken at Sears, you know, for their annual <laughs> report. I think Sears is still a thing, maybe. But, you know, I, I haven't run across anyone who wears a wig. If you see someone who wears a wig or runs a publicly traded company, hit me up at, at Alder Lane Eggs. I, I'll, I'll short them in a heartbeat. So, so Helen of Troy is on a slow road to hell. Um, 
H-E-L-L instead of H-E-L-E. And I think it's going to get there, you know, sort of when it happens, it'll happen fast. Trupanion is just a scam, complete scam run by pathological liars. And, and B. Riley, which I just stumbled upon, is, is, is truly a mess run by, a, by another liar, Bryant Riley. So take your pick right there. Those are the three. You know, and in terms, All right. and you know, and in terms of longs, we'll talk about them. It's just it's a it's a very hard and dangerous market. It's a hard and dangerous world. The world is broken. No one knows exactly what's going on, and and the stock market's sort of like a pinball machine. Last week you were shooting the moon. This week you're you're you know face down in a ditch. So it's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. well, it's tough for me, and I'm a tough guy. So I don't know how professionals can do it, you know, and there's a lot of, going to be a lot of cross currents ending the year, tax loss, selling, things like that. And, and I'm, and I'm working on something new too. So I'm, I'm working on something new that, that may intrigue you guys or someone at your outfit. Yeah. Well, we're always intrigued. We're always skeptical and we always do our own work, but, um, always intrigued by outliers and that's what you bring to the table in a very big way tell let's let's start on a name we 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 don't agree on so we were long overstock jeremy maybe you give a little bit of uh color on this one because yeah. you came to my office one day and you were like brian we got to get rid of this thing and 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 give give a little context as to why and then we'll feed that into mark into why he's on the other side of it and uh, what he's excited about on it. And I think he has some news on it too. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just start to say, to be, to be clear, we are not short it. We, we're we long, and but we, we can't sort of underwrite it um, in terms of this Bed Bath & Beyond rebrand. So right, we took it off our, our, our long list when that, when that rebrand happened, understanding the magnitude of it uh, and seeing the initial results that they reported. Uh, and the, in the context of a slowing consumer environment, we just thought, you know, numbers are likely to continue to get worse here. And I, I know our, our media team put up a clip of, uh, of that little excerpt from our call on Twitter. And the next day I got an email from Mark that just said, call me with his phone number. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gosh, Mark's going to kill me. Um, no, I did. But did I kill you? No, no. You were very, uh, very respectful about it the whole time. I, I appreciate that. So. Anyway, Mark, I, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, yeah, you we'll, we'll the, throw it you back to you. It scared the shit out of me, so I said, call me, you know, just yep. yeah, go easy on me. I'm not a young man like you two, so. Gotcha. Um, so, go, so tell them, tell everyone the reason you don't like it. That's, that's important. Yeah, and, and uh, I actually brought a couple a couple slides here if you, uh, if you guys want to pop them up. But basically, like, right, we've got a, a, a brand that we liked from a long-term perspective, Overstock, that's, you know, it's been around since the 90s, wasn't killed by Amazon, wasn't killed by Wayfair, uh, you know, with both of those operating at a material loss and, and Ellerstock was actually able to make money in this e-commerce, uh, you know, like home e-commerce platform business over a long term. And therefore, like to completely rebrand that into a, a company, Bed Bath & Beyond, that has, uh, you know, better awareness, but has been kind of a dying brand in terms of relevance. So. You can see you've got Overstock, um, and uh, you go ahead and pop up the Google Trends if you can, guys, real quick. Overstock and Bed Bath and Beyond, right? We've see, basically seen the interest in both of those falling off a cliff since this rebrand was done, um, and right, this Google interest basically saying like, did people Google the 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 name of the of the of the company? So we're seeing that happen with uh, again a, a replatform to a brand that we're not sure it really is going to have relevance right this is a place where people shopped in the stores the stores aren't coming back you have to decide to go go to the uh, go to the website so we thought buying the ip made sense and if you want to guys then show the the breakdown of share we kind of said what do we think the opportunity is for for share on uh, on this bed bath and beyond like liquidation that's uh, the first couple slides there yeah first so those are our initial sort of take before the company, before uh, Overstock or Beyond bought the, the Bed Bath & Beyond uh, IP, we thought most of it was going to be in stores uh, and then be kind of distributed around these different retailers online. Uh, when they bought the IP, we said, you know, they have a big chance to get a big portion of the share. So that was, we bumped that up from instead of 5% of their online, I think you can see the next slide, around 30%. That's like a double-digit revenue tailwind. 
Um, and then we saw the results and the and how it sort of played out uh, with a complete rebrand. And I just I, I just don't know if that's like the right move to take this to a brand where you know it's brick and mortar based and aging core customer base. Uh, and, a, and a brand that's becoming more uh, uh, less and less relevant with the consumer, and you didn't. You also just have like the confusion around you know those headlines, right? People probably you can go see the Google interest spiked when Bed Bath Beyond went bankrupt. People are going to be like, wait a minute, am I buying a, a good from a bankrupt company? Like, isn't that a bad thing to do uh, on online? Do I get to return it still? Like, you just get consumer confusion, uh, which I think we have now with the the company name change too. So that's just. Yeah, I don't. I don't see like a clear big downside because, like, we look at the assets and what this could potentially be worth. Uh, we do think there's there's opportunity there, but in terms of where the business is going over the next, you know, six twelve months, I think it could could materially uh, get materially worse. So that was why we punched it. Uh, you know, kicked it off of our uh, of our long list. Um, you know, we had on our long bias list. So anyway, Mark, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. I don't know if you have any. Uh, specific and, and, things and, you want to hit on uh, and, and, uh, around and, that, and and at the time, and at the time, and as of now, you're nothing but dead right, and I've been nothing but dead wrong, and it's kind of an interesting thing. You know, you sent me some lists of questions or or things that you were interested in, and you said I used to like Jonathan Johnson. You know what happened? Well, I like a lot of people, and if you double cross me or you don't execute or you lie to me, that's it. And Johnson couldn't execute. He couldn't communicate properly on this thing, as as you said, and he lied to me. And I, on the call back a week or less than a week ago, you know, they called me back with any questions from the conference call. I said, I don't have any questions. I'll just give you a comment that you're gonna be gone because I've written letters to the board. My lawyers have written letters to the board, and you're, a, you know, you let me down. You've lied to me. You disappointed me, and you can't execute. And you're going to be replaced. And he said, "I'm the CEO, and I have no plans on leaving." On Sunday, he was fired, and and they put out a press release on Monday saying he stepped down. He didn't step down. He was fired, and and that's sort of my problem with the board. And and we're going to get into that, and in that it's a huge opportunity. Bed Bath and Beyond. They paid twenty-one million dollars for it. The company used to be worth six billion. Then it went to three billion. They bought the IP and the brand for twenty-one million dollars. And I thought it was a great idea. I continue to think it's a great idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. Why? Because there's always going to be legacy Patrick Byrne and his stench sticking around Overstock. And if you want to be in the bridal registry business, which Bed Bath was and and overstock slash beyond will be in or the kids business overstock does not exactly give customers and and suppliers a great feel so that so the idea of the website being bed bath and beyond is a to me is a great one and to change the name of the company to beyond to me is a great idea because the stench of burn floating around, the company could never get rid of. And they were always looking to do a rebrand. And if you rebrand out of Overstock into anything else, it would have cost you a couple hundred million dollars to come up with your own brand. And I think Beyond or Bed Bath & Beyond for the home is a big thing. So when this first went down and it first happened, you know, Johnson got people all excited and the stock went from 20 to 40. And again, I make plenty of mistakes, even though I'm old and I try to learn from them. Did I sell any stock at 40? No. Did I sell any at 35? No. Because I thought this thing was going to go to the moon and I, and I was wrong. So I'm wrong on Johnson. I'm wrong on the not taking profits, which at the time were huge. And I believed in this thing. So I happened to be friends with a guy named Marcus Lemonis, who you know, who I think single hand, of all the people I've known, and I know many in this business in terms of operators, he is the best I've ever bumped into. He is cold-blooded. 
He calls me at three in the morning. He can call me at four in the morning, call me nine at night. I don't know where the hell he's at. And he is just dynamite. And I said, the board at this company is very, very weak. And they don't own any stock. They have no skin in the game. They're legacy folks. Would you think of going on the board here? And he says he's going to do some work and get back to me. And he looked into it and he said, I'd like that very much. So I wrote a letter to the board, sort of a demand letter back. I think it was dated July 21. I said, I own a significant amount of stock, which I do. And I said, I've been around forever. I've helped a company with T0. I've helped the company with Grain Chain. I helped the company with Bit. I'm a huge supporter. I want this guy on the board. And they start, they don't push back, but they drag their feet and it ended up taking seven weeks. And Johnson promised me that Marcus would become chairman, either chairman of the board or executive chairman of the board. And, you know, please, you know, make it, make it, make Marcus come on because originally they said he's just going to be a board member. So we go back and forth and back and forth. And Marcus agrees to do it. And they'd say he's going to become a significant you know, leadership, be in a significant leadership position. So conference call happened. I think Marcus pretty much wrote the script. The script was great. On the Q&A, Johnson fell all over himself. I thought the Q&A was terrible. And what pissed me off to no fucking end was on the callbacks, the sell side and Holder said, what role does Marcus have in the company? And Johnson said, and, and the other people said, he's just another director. And I just said, that's fucking it. So Johnson, you know, asked me to sign some standstill agreement where I wouldn't tweet negative things about the company and things like that. And I said, only if you guarantee me he will become chairman or executive chairman of the board. And Johnson said, you have my word. So when having your word of chairman or executive chairman versus he's just a board member, that did not sit well to me, sit well with me at all. So things start moving. Johnson gets fired. I get a email from my lawyers on Monday, this past Monday you know, from Sidley and Austin, you know, Overstock's board's lawyer that I'm violating the agreement and they want me to take down my tweets, my skeptical tweets of Overstock. And I said, you have got to be kidding me. So my lawyers wrote this letter to Overstock's lawyers yesterday and I'm going to read it to everyone at Hedge Eye TV. I haven't put it on Twitter, haven't talked about it. I'm going to read it. And I will then get into what these guys on the board are going to force me to do. So it's dated November 8th of 2023. Mr. Stern, this law firm represents Mark and Max Gahotas. We write in response to your November 5th letter which you saw fit to send on a Sunday morning and in which you characterize our client, Mark Cahotas, as being in blatant violation of the stockholder agreement between Mr. Cahotas, his son, Max Cahotas, and Overstock Inc., now known as Beyond. Your contentions are incorrect and your attempt to bully Mr. Cahotas is ill-advised. Editorial comment, to say the least. Your letter rests on a fundamental misapprehension as there is no enforceable stockholder agreement. Your client's former CEO, Jonathan Johnson, suggested such an agreement to Mr. Cahotas, but Mr. Cahotas and his son, Max, expressly conditioned their assent on Mr. Johnson's promise to see Marcus Lemonis appointed executive chairman of Beyond. Had Mr. Johnson not made that promise, there would have been no consideration for the proposed agreement, which otherwise imposes no obligation on the company. Mr. Lamonis still has not been appointed executive chairman of the company. Mr. Johnson and the company failed to fulfill that promise. 
Consequently, the company has failed to satisfy a necessary condition or perform its obligations under the agreement. As a result, no enforceable contract existed at all. Even if one did, Mr. Cahotas' performance under the agreement would be excused. In short, Mr. Cahotas has no obligation to do any of the things you demand that he do, including deleting his Twitter posts or assuring you of his intent to abide by the supposed contract that the company has already breached without excuse. He will not comply with your demand. In any event, we do not understand the aggression in your letter. Mr. Cahotas is a longstanding proponent of and advocate for beyond. The posts you complain about support the direction Mr. Cahotas believes is in the company's best interest. Views that Mr. Johnson, Allison Abraham, and others at the company purported to share in their own communication with Mr. Cahotas. In particular, Cahotas strongly believes Mr. Lamonis is an extraordinary leader and executive who should be made executive chairman of the company without delay, because that is the best thing for Beyond and its shareholders. Mr. Cahotas directs all his advocacy about Beyond towards the companies growth, development, and success. He's an ally, not an enemy. Given this history, it's puzzling to say the least that the company elected to send an ominous letter over the weekend to Mr. Cahotas demanding his compliance with an ineffective agreement or else. Is Beyond really planning to sue one of the best advocates and significant shareholders? We note that Mr. Johnson ceased to be CEO over the same weekend that you sent your letter and wonder if the letter was the ill-advised last act of a lame duck executive on his way out the door. Whether that is the case or your letter rests on some other faulty premise, we ask that responsible parties step up and withdraw the letter and its demands. Mr. Cahotas hopes that going forward, the company will take his advocacy and advice for positive suggestions they are, rather than have lawyers work through the weekend drafting letters that seek to silence him. Please confirm by Monday, November 13th, that you're withdrawing this baseless demand made in your letter of November 5th. Very truly yours, Fred Norton, the Norton Law Firm. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, the demand is, the demand is Allison Abraham stepped down as chairwoman of Overstock. She's a Patrick Byrne appointee. She was in tight with Jonathan Johnson, and she's a disgrace. She is an absolute disgrace and she needs to step down. Anne Lamonis needs to be appointed either the chairman or in charge of overseeing the business because Lamonis would not go on this board and buy stock for himself unless he saw an enormous opportunity, which exists. Short term, did the numbers suck after they put it together? Yes, because Johnson fucked up and he's gone, which is the proper result. And instead of bitching about it, like everyone likes to do, I did something about it. And I'm going to do more about it. And Thaler, who's not a dope, and you guys know him, he owns 10% of this thing. And he's serious about getting this thing going. So with seven bucks in cash, of which some they're going to spend rebranding it, no doubt about it, and probably 7 to $15 in Medici assets, with the stock selling at 16 you know, if Lamonis, it turns out he becomes chairman, executive chairman, or the lead director who oversees the business, he says, I'm going to take this amount of costs out of this thing. I'm going to sell the building. I'm going to bring this company into the 2020s with social media, uh, YouTube influencers, and do things that he has planned. This thing is going to go through the fucking roof because Wayfair which we all can agree upon is, is not good, spends money like they're crazy, is leveraged, the results aren't good, the results are never good, is there for the taking. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of high-powered business guys out there who want to be CEO of, of Beyond, a lot of them. Some of the names will blow you guys away, but I'm going to keep those to myself. So... I'm not a guy you try to bully. I'm not a guy you try to push around. I busted my ass to get Lamonis through the door and on the board, and I'm not done. Lamonis is the kind of guy who is a leader. He's an in-charge kind of guy. He, he demands and commands respect 
And I think he's fantastic. I think he's fantastic and he's charitable. He's hard charging. He's fair. And, and he is the perfect guy to lead this company and to help Nielsen, who's the inter, interim CEO or whoever the CEO is, and to take it to the next level. But I'm just tired of the fucking bullshit that goes on. Tired of the bullshit that goes on in the markets. And I'm tired of a board that owns 1%. I mean, my son owns more stock than, than the board put together. And Lamonis, his first four days on the board, bought more stock than the entire board has. So, you know, don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining and don't tell send me stupid lawyer letters saying I can't tweet. I can say whatever the hell I want. And if and if a judge says I can't tweet, I'll start a YouTube channel. I'll take out ads in the New York Times. I don't care. But but there becomes a principle where you don't let bullshit go on. And 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 Jeremy was right in his call. And the stock has been for shit, but I still believe it. I still like it. I'm still in it. And, and I'm trying to affect change. Cool. I'm trying to make things better. That's, and that's if people, cool. and if people don't like it too fucking bad. Great. Uh, so, great context there. I appreciate you but, sharing. And, but, but I didn't put this on Twitter. I did it on hedge ITV yeah, and I, and I'm, awesome. and I'm not, and I'm not stopping. So if they think they want to send me letters from Sidley and Austin, it's going to slow me down. All it does is speed me up. It's it speeds me up. But if 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 okay, Jeremy, if it comes out on next week or two weeks from now, whatever, that Lamonis becomes the chairman or the significant lead director in charge of the business, and they're going to take blank costs out and spend this much on social media to rebrand this thing with all his ideas, does that does that change your view? Um, potentially, if I mean, bring, if you, we're, if we're, you bring a guy like that in to say, I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I'm going to change compensation, I'm going to pay everyone less, I'm going to give them stock options. And, and, and here's a concept that Thaler ran by me. What if, right, in terms of the CEO, whoever that is, interim, it's Nielsen right now, what if five to 10 percent, you know, of the company is going to be in stock options? twice or three times you know the last sale of the stock and the new ceo is going to get very little w2 kind of like what happened with tempur-pedic tempur-pedic was a piece of shit on its ass run by bobby trussell who wore a wig and they brought in thompson and i think the stock's up like 10 times since they brought in thompson and his pay package was was strictly stock way above above the market and and he's performed and he's made more money than all of us put together times to the 15th power. I mean, so Lamonis is that, that kind of sure. guy. Lamonis is that kind of guy. And, and I like him and he's my friend, but he's not showing up at this thing as a favor to me. He's showing up in this thing because he thinks he can win. He's not, he has plenty to do other than to be on the beyond board and to waste his time with a bunch of people who own no stock dicking him around. So he's he's a believer, big and and you guys should talk to him about it. And but but you've been dead right on your call and you were right to make that call. But I was working in the background to try to prove you wrong. And I and I haven't and I haven't proven you wrong yet, but I'm trying. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the Brian, looks like you're on, uh, on mute there. The uh... what's it going to take, Jeremy, for you to walk in to my office in a week? and say, all right, I think we go the other way. Yes, I mean, like within our process, right, we don't get as excited about individuals as, as you certainly do, Mark. Um, so, so some of the things I need to see, right, is like a path to the rate of change of the business really getting better. Um, I, I certainly don't have that right now, but like, so I, I mean, that kind of takes me to my next question. I mean, sounds like you're, you're kind of saying like cost cuts and, and, you know, changing up your compensation structure to be one that benefits the uh, you know the the P and L better meaning like you don't have to spend S G N A expense you have you know stock options uh, again that's like something that Wayfair we've been kind of been a little critical of is that the you know the the top two execs get eighty thousand dollars a year in uh, in comp and the next whole bunch get like two hundred thousand which uh, I'm not sure was competitive uh, on a it was mainly because they add it back as like a you know adjusted EBITDA number, which which Overstock actually could do and and arguably would have a more comparable sort of multiple framework probably then to, to well, look the, at the, the other the, the margins would be more comparable. 
Yeah. But I but I think the difference is is Lamonas brings juice and Lamonas brings energy into a company. I mean the Raiders, my poor team, they got rid of McDaniels who had no juice. They bring in a guy who's never coached at the pro level and they kicked the Giants ass last week because people feel energized. If people Lamonas' big deal is to have skin in the game. And if you have skin in the game, you're more interested in performing if if it really matters. If you have no skin in the game, it's unclear what your incentives are. And Overstock and Beyond's compares get very, very, very easy. You know, the economy could go straight to hell. That's that's everyone's problem. But but there's a plan. He has a plan. And and I believe in him. And I and I told him I'd stand in front of a bus for him. I believe in him that much. I mean, we've only met each other a couple of times, but I just think he's fantastic. And I and part of my deal is you bet the jockey, not the horse. And I think he's a tremendous jockey. But to your thing and to your questions early, I was wrong on Johnson. I was just flat out fucking wrong. And and I'm entitled to be wrong. You know, every you know, my lovers love me, my haters hate me. You know, when Helen of Troy is 140, they're saying, well, What the fuck's with Helen of Troy? That that that. Let's squeeze your sorry ass. You don't hear from them when they're down. So I can either be right on the lawns or right on the shorts, and hopefully sooner or later I get right on both. But but I believe in Lamonis as a jockey. I really do. I, I think he's fantastic. And he is the kind of guy whose inspiration and energy can turn this thing around. And and I'm glad he's on the board. I need him to become a more leadership kind of guy on the board and at the company. And I'm glad Johnson's gone. But the balance sheet's there. Company's not going broke, and I think the assets are there. And I and I still like it. Definitely a good balance sheet. So is that is that something you think uh, the company should do? You kind of mentioned like should they be selling off some of the Medici assets and and as a beyond bull, like do you want to see them sell their T zero stake or is that something you'd rather? No, them I don't. Be, I don't, I don't want them to see and them t- sell their T zero stake. What I want them to do is communicate the assets they hold in in Medici, which are very valuable. So for example, grain chain, right? I own Grain Chain privately, so I'm I'm familiar with the numbers. Grain Chain's a, a SaaS company that does in ag business, and the revenue has gone from this is annual two million to fourteen million to thirty five million this year, and they can do sixty five million rolling out of bed next year. So what's that worth? What is two fourteen thirty five sixty five worth? What's that worth? Billion dollars, you know, billion dollars plus. And the, you know, what are what what do SaaS companies that grow like that trade at? So let's say it's worth a billion dollars. Overstock or or beyond owns 30% of it, that's three hundred million dollars. T Zero is twenty-five percent owned by ICE. All of T Zero's competitors have gone out of business. T Zero has cash. T Zero software didn't work. That's why Goon was brought in. It now works. Let's see what they do. So, so it's not that they need to sell these things because the market sucks and the world sucks and the economy sucks and things are broken, but at least explain to people what's in the portfolio. At least tell the story. You know, understand these are private companies, so we don't need everyone from Wall Street beating down grain chain's door. So we, we need management to spend time running the business but at least communicate what you have in the portfolio because right now the market values it at zero. And in one of the letters Thaler made public and sent to the board, he said he's confident that between cash and, and Medici, it's worth more than the last sale of the stock. So you get retail for zero. Well, that's where Lamonis comes in. So, you know, whether it's some of the parts, whether it's retail grows, whether they sell something off, I mean, the stock's 16 bucks. It was just 40. I could jump off a fucking bridge for not selling it there, but I, but I believed it. That's the whole, and I still believe it. But mistakes were made, execution was poor, and changes, you know, when things like that happen, changes have to occur. And I'm not going to sit around with my name on the line here and my money in this thing to sit around and say, oh, that's okay. Fuck that. Change, change has to happen. And change did happen. And and there will be more change. Gotcha. I mean, so I know there was a there was a management change even prior to Johnson, right? Like a chief marketing officer or something was was that something like a specific execution issue? You think around 
around the Bed Bath & Beyond I think, thing? I, or? I, think, I think Johnson couldn't hire a proper marketing person, but I think Marcus Limonis can. That's why I tweet, there's beasts at the door. I mean, the people who want to come and work at this company, you know, and take it from here to there are significant. Significant people have reached out to me and said they, they, want, they want this job or want to be here because they know what this thing can be. And again, as you said, Amazon tried to kill it and couldn't. Wafer tried to kill it and couldn't. Patrick Byrne tried to kill it. That, that madman running this thing tried to kill it and couldn't. And the thing in general, as you said, made money and generated cash. But the Bed Bath brand is a really good brand. <laughs> and to get it for $21 million is a steal. But you have to execute around the brand, as you correctly said. And they misexecuted at the start, but it's only three months in. And yeah, the economy shit. So so let's give Limonis and crew a shot. And if they can't fix it, then I'm more wrong than I've already been. So I'm not, you know, it's just facing the facts. Brian, you have any other questions on Beyond? And I'll just flag too, if anyone viewing, you can put questions into the the little chat box below the video player. We'll try to save a little time for a few top questions at the end. Any others on uh, Beyond Overstock for you, Brian, or should we change tickers? No, not on this one. I, I do want to change tickers. Actually, I do want to stay on longs, even though I'm not short. I've got like 75 shorts on my list and like 20 longs. And of those longs, half of them are probably shorts. Um, but um, that's how bearish I am about the consumer right now. I do want to talk about Camping World while we're on the topic of Marcus. Um, you know, what he's done, how, how, how many dealerships has he acquired over the past nine months? Wow. Like 15, like just like a, a, a crazy number. This guy is relentless. He's going out there. He's going to local competition saying, hey, you got a depressed EBITDA number. I'll pay you a trough multiple on that depressed EBITDA number. Otherwise, I'm going to open a store down the street and put you out of business. What do you want? And he's getting these deals done. And this is a business where there's really one competitor. And <clears> it, <throat> it, it, it who's seems the one, like there's who's so the one Who's the one competitor? It's Camping World. Well, but so so you guys are retail guys. How many retailers in this com in this country have no competition on the national level? How many retailers in this country have no competition on a national level? Uh, maybe one or two, um, but other it, other than Camping World, who? RH. I mean, I got I I I I mean, Gary's Gary's a genius. He's crazy, but he's a genius. But okay, <laughs> RH. Okay, fine. I'll 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 give you that for what he does. But he is very 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 high cost. Very he he runs a high cost deal. He Lim runs a high cost operation. Lamonis Lim runs a tight 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 ship, where no one can get near him because he has scale, scope, and cost. So, yeah, and the vendors really need him in a massive way, and they need him more every day. So we're we're long this stock. Um, it's not at the top of our list, um, but I'm waiting patiently. What's, what's, the what's at the time. what's at the what's at the top of your list? So RH is Gildan is Gildan, which is a great company with a great com competitive mode. I like TJX. You can see I'm kind of playing it safe here, um, with the exception you're, of RH, which is got leverage. Safe. I mean, and, you're, you're in fucking t-shirts and closeouts. So, okay. <laughs> Gildan's I mean, a great company. Okay. Huh? Yeah. I'm, look, zero, zero problem, but Limonis in the next RV cycle could earn $10 easily, easily. I mean, and, and he's not done buying guys. He's not done consolidating the industry. And I think the one thing, the worst thing that could happen to you, there's two bad things that can happen to you. You wake up and you have to compete against Marcus Limonis or you wake up and you're on my enemy list. I mean, those, those, <laughs> those are, those are, those are two things where you wake up where, where things can get, can get a little tricky. 
because he I would never want to compete with him ever. And and he's you know, he's a great guy, but he's he's a ruthless businessman. Ruthless. Is 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 he the best CEO you've ever seen? He's the best business mind I've ever known. I mean, he 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 has endless energy and I've never I've never seen a mind like his. I mean, I I happen to be I happen to be partial to Brian Cornell, the CEO of Target. I think he's an incredible individual. I've known him from when he was head of stores at Safeway. He's my friend and I never traffic in Target stock ever and we never talk about Target business. But he's 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 really some kind of operator because boy he is he is running that thing and he is running that thing into severe headwinds severe and he's 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 a brilliant mind and a wonderful 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 man i mean i thought i thought howard schultz is probably the best ceo i've ever known you know from what he pulled off with starbucks i thought i think he's i think he's fantastic i thought he would have been a fantastic president too but i mean he's he's a he's a Howard Schultz was a tremendous operator, tremendous for, for what, you know, and I knew him back in the day when that thing just started out. So he is something, Limonis is something. I mean, Limonis is, was a orphan from Lebanon who, who came to this country. I mean, he started with nothing and he's, he's, he's something. I mean, I'm lucky, I'm lucky to know him and I'm lucky he talks to me. Yeah. Lucky. So, and, and I, I know you aren't a big cycle guy, you're a secular guy, um, and uh, you're very patient. Um, a lot of our clients aren't quite as patient, so uh, some are, and I like them a lot. I like talking to them because I like thinking, you know, two, three years down the road past the time frame where most management teams are talking their book because this is like retail and consumer discretionary. Most management teams, and I used to work at Nike, um, most management teams don't know uh, sales a day in advance, never mind a quarter or even a year in advance. So I put our do own I, research. Do, I, do, you, do you want me to freak you two out and freak the audience out? Tell you what I'm yeah. like working on and what I think? Of course. You guys actually follow this thing. It's a company called Glasshouse. And they're the largest pot growing greenhouse. You guys call it a unicorn kind of in the world. And the stock's done nothing. And I'm not a pot guy or a pot industry guy. But if your guy is right on this thing, and I think he's right, and you guys follow it, Hedge Eye follows this thing, Glasshouse. I That's think Howard Penny, everybody. Just yes. Yeah, this this thing and i and i haven't talked to him about it but this thing could be an absolute monster and the reason why i think it could happen is i'm a believer of interstate commerce with pot i think that if these guys grow it in california and are the low cost grower i think eventually and probably in the not too distant future they can ship it to chicago and sell it there or ship it to new jersey i think it's going to be it's going to be become a low cost game and I think this a lot of low cost California guys could ship it across the country. So I'm not a stoner. I'm not a pot guy. But I read <laughs> research and my pal Russell Line likes this thing. And I've done some work on it. And this thing is actually crazy enough to work. And it's not cyclical. You don't have to worry about the economy. But if they can grow and pot at $121 a pound, when other guys costs are three to four times higher, and ship this stuff across the nation in scale could turn into a big, big, big deal. So it it, it intrigues me. It, it intrigues me as a as a story in a company. So tell well, Howard, tell Howard I really enjoyed his work on that. I really I, I will. And props to Russ on the shout out. Yeah. Uh, so so back to Camping World though, just because. Timing is everything, and this stock frustrates me, and it makes me want to get bullish on it sooner than later, because once this cycle turns, the stock is going to triple, and I'm going to be sitting here saying, oh, shit, gonna, I wish. Gonna do, it's going to do a lot more than triple, but keep but keep going, because I have a story to tell you about that. Keep going. Yeah, my my sense is, like, if you put your cyclical hat on, how, when, when, like, 
is 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 this a housing cycle turn is this an auto market turn because we're we're thinking that we don't get that turn for about another year um but i i truth truth be told i haven't done enough work on the rv business specifically in order to drill down really when what the replacement cycle is what the used vehicle cycle is um you're you're much deeper in this thing you're very close to the name if 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 you had to pick a point in time in 2024 or 25 when we actually do see a change in this cycle and i don't mean comping up 20 i just mean no longer comping down 20. <clears throat> well what's so i'm 63 i started in this business in 1982 so that's 41 years ago which makes me feel older than i actually am and i've probably been in rv stocks long or short maybe 30 times in my life and when business is great when business at these companies is booming the stocks initially do really well then all of a sudden they start acting like shit and they start going straight down so in this is one of the few industries where the stock bottoms probably six to nine months in front of the turn so the stock will start going up in bad rv news and bad rv numbers and if yeah. i were to guess i think the bottom is in in rvs and i think 24 will be flat to maybe even up from 23 but people won't start thinking of this really as a play probably until the late winter spring which is probably a good time to buy the stock now especially if you get tax loss hits as he keeps acquiring things because all you really need to know if you're a long-term investor you put this thing away because you know marcus owns a ton of stock and he's acquiring so much stuff right now when this thing turns his earnings power is going to be 10 bucks then the question is going to be what multiple do you want to pay on the 10 bucks you know do you want to pay 10 times which gets you to 100 do you want to pay six times which gets you to 60 whatever you pay it's better than 18. so so the 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 real thing i you know think about is how bad can things get here how bad can things get from the from the economy or business standpoint and being the skeptical guy I am and that the world is rigged and that we have an election year coming in 24 and you're not going to get elected in a recession slash depression or whatever, you know, the second people think this thing or the economy is troughing out and or rates have stopped going up and or could go down, this thing will fly long before. This stock is going to fly before the business turns. The yeah. stock the stock will go up long before the business turns. And when I agree with that. the question is, how big can demand be? And one thing I just want to put out there, and this is out there, the way it's so expensive to buy a house and rent in this day and age, don't think for a minute there's going to be a good part of the population living out of their fifth wheel yeah not, not in a depression kind of scenario but you can get yourself a nice used fifth wheel you pull it behind your truck and you basically live in your camper instead of paying three thousand a month in rent or not being able to afford a house it's a it's a it's a home on wheels right it's yeah. it's, it's it's a home on wheels and the housing stocks are doing really well right now the home building stocks and and it's not it's camping but it's also in a way again a place shelter on wheels which in a backdoor way ties into to beyond you know in 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 good sam is a huge asset and good sam ties into welcome rewards and ties into club o wouldn't be surprised if targets program ties into this as well so I think in times like this, with the economy being sort of eh, what you see is what you get, you got to think a little outside of the box on what a guy like Lamonis is thinking. And Lamonis yeah. is 
thinking I'm buying all these places cheaper than replacement. I'm buying them for inventory because I know when things get good, I won't be able to buy stuff again till the next down cycle. And this guy's lived through many up and down cycles. So he knows what he's doing. And I sleep well knowing that he's watching over my capital. Yep. So, so it's not, it it's, not the when, it's not when do things turn? It's just how much worse can it get from here? And, and, but he knows, you know, if he's not going to get it right, no one's going to get it right. So that's, that's how I sort of see that. All right, Mark, I, I, I want to leave room for a couple of questions here and we only have eight minutes left. Well, you don't um, want to talk, you don't want to talk about that piece of shit, Helen of Troy. I want to talk Helena Troy right now. Okay. Um, and we we were on this analyst meeting, and I got to tell you, their new CEO is about the least impressive executive I think I've ever seen in my life. This company came out, they actually had a slide deck where they showed you projections out to 2030, more than half of the growth, growth, I call hmm. it, um, is from acquisitions that they haven't even identified yet. They haven't identified them. How they know the return on what those are going to be is beyond me. And they came out and they told you what their stock price is going to be in 2030. Have you ever seen this in your career? Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen this in crazier, but then the stocks go down 90%. This is a roll up of garbagey brands getting garbagey. I mean, who the hell needs another Hydro Flask? Who needs anything they sell? And you're talking about a tight consumer, the middle of the world, which is where they are. That's first to go. No one needs this stuff. If if you're if you're turning in your pet, if you're cutting costs, if you're not buying beauty products, if you're not buying braces for your daughter, you're sure not buying your ninth bronze shaver or your fifteenth hydro flask that you don't need. It's just garbage. And 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 the thing is. Their accounting is so bad with this non-gap ad backs and, and roll-ups. It's, it's the end of a roll-up. I mean, they have too much debt. The balance sheet's a mess. They don't grow. I mean, there's nothing here. You may not want to short it, but any of these guys who are long the stock, they need their head looked at. And, and they're going to miss numbers. They're going to miss everything again. And, and I just don't see it. And, and again, it's not a volatile stock. It's something you can sleep at night, you know, being short or not owning or however you want to describe it. But just just give the story time to play out. It's playing out exactly how I how I talked about it. And and the yeah, number four and, and the CFO left and the CEO's leaving. And the new CEO CFO came in who used to work there and he showed up owning puts. And there was a big to do about him owning puts and <laughs> he had to make a refiling that he sold his puts. So what kind of CFO shows up at his new job and he has to disclose he owns puts in the stock? I mean, this thing is insane. And then they say they're going to enter some cost cutting mode. Well, your brands suck. If you keep cutting costs, they're going to go away. You need to spend to get these things back going. So, yeah. I mean, you know, kudos to you for following, staying on this thing. But this thing is like garbage going into garbage land. And, yeah, uh, this is this is number one on my best idea short list. It's one where we actually do get regional put re reasonable pushback from investors and the best one. And I love this one. They're like, Brian, so you're saying this company is going to do four dollars in gap earnings and the streets underwriting this bullshit non gap, non cash twelve dollar earnings number. But even on your number, if you're getting to about seven bucks in cash earnings. If this stock is going to be a $30 stock, like you're saying, um, which we are telling people, it's got to trade out a high teens free cash flow yield. And my answer is exactly. This is a shitty business that should trade out a high teens free cash flow yield, if not over 20. I mean, what, 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 brands what, if, what, if, is, what, if the, what if the gap earnings number is two bucks, then what? which is where i think it's going to go frankly and then where does leverage go higher okay so fire away with your questions if you only have six minutes or whatever 
Um, so a question here on Beyond, and um, I think it's an interesting one, just like, do you believe this, uh, this change at the board is inevitable, inevitable, or is yes. there a significant risk that it does not happen? As long as I'm alive, I'm not letting go of the rope. It's going to happen. It's, it's this, if this has to be a test of will, they're going to lose. They, they're going to lose and they're going to, I mean, you know, Thaler has his deal. I have my deal and he's writing letters and, you know, they want to start lawyer lettering with me. They're going to lose and lose big. It's, it's going to happen. I, I have a couple of cards up my sleeve, even though I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt today. And, um, I think it's going to happen. Question is timing, but I um, I think it's sooner than later. Let's put it this way. I told Johnson he was gone a week and a half ago. Thaler wrote up a, a letter in his 13 deed demanding Johnson go, and he was fired two days later. So between Thaler and I, and again, we don't work together. I've never even met him. I wouldn't know him if he walked by me on the street. I know you two clowns, but I wouldn't know him. You know, <laughs> this is serious stuff. This is serious business to me. So I think it's going to happen. All right, Jeremy. Nice. The question is, Jeremy, do you like it after Lamona says we're going to turn this thing into a big deal? I got to I got to see a little bit more of what's actually going to happen and uh, where the business starts to trend. But why, why, don't, we'll why, don't, you get, why don't you get Lamonas on this Hedge Eye TV? I, 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 mean, you you, know, I think that's like a great it. idea. I don't know what, like, what that might like do with his like well. CNBC contract, but uh, we'd be happy to have him. So if you, if you want to mention I think he's, I think he's done with the Cartoon Network. <laughs> I think he's done with those clowns. Um, Kevin, Kevin right. theory. There's a there's a lot of like I'm trying to find a, a, a upvoted question. So vote them in if you if you have them, people. But um, I'll, I'll just bring this up one real, real real quick. You can keep keep your your answer short. But do, are you still involved in Anavix? Yeah. I think Genovix is great. I mean, I think the call a couple of days ago was fantastic. They're on track. The machines are testing out. Seems like they're installing sooner than, than they thought. I mean, I am ride and die with Genovix. I love it. So I love it. Raj. I think Raj runs is doing a great job. And I think, I mean, I encourage everyone to go back and listen or read the transcript of their last conference call and see what they're messing with. Battery is a problem. And they're one of the few who seem to be executing on what they say. So we'll see. I'll bring up one more, uh, one more ticker here. It's one that was uh, one of our best long calls ever here at Hedge Eye. Someone asked a question on it, and we're actually now it's one of our best idea shorts, and it's been working very well. But do you have any any take on GameStop, Mark? Yeah, I think GameStop's probably going to two bucks. I think Ryan. As great an operator as Lamonis is, I think Ryan Cohn is a horrifically bad operator and an even worse person. So I don't know, you know, how he's going to pull himself out of this mess. He can't seem to retain an executive. I have zero position in it. I'm not, I'm not going to get involved with some of those crazy people who like this thing, but I'm a huge, if I could short Ryan Cohn, I would in a heartbeat. Everything that guy touches turns to complete shit including his his soiree in bed bath and beyond and how he how he played that thing and uh bad 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 guy so i i wouldn't be anywhere close to that thing but, maybe uh, he could run GameStop wearing an orange jumpsuit from prison i don't know what's going to happen with him but it's it's not uh he is not a good man so yeah. you know, to, to everyone if you made money being long GameStop, congratulations you made money short. Congratulations. I'm just not a player. I got, I got my hands full with the squirrels I'm involved with. I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. need, a, I don't need another one. I hate Trupanion, though, and I hate this B. Riley. Just in, something to keep an eye on. A couple right. of good new tickers there for everybody. And, and, uh, and the, in the glass, in the glass <laughs> house with Penny. Tell, tell, Penny to, tell Penny he should reach out to me. I'm intrigued with that thing. I'm, I'm going to talk to him right now. So... We're at the top of the hour, Mark. You are you are the balls. Uh, yeah. You are uh, you're, you. You will go down as one of the best short sellers this market has seen in the history of uh, the modern era. And I'm hoping a couple of your longs work out well. 
uh, too. And uh, I hope to be on the right side of those as well. But we're going to do our own research and see where we come out. And if I have to get in higher, I'll get in higher. But um, I want to go through our research process and do what we do. So, Mark, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Jeremy, thanks for being uh, point man on the studio. Uh, and everybody make it a great day and make sure you follow uh, Mark on Twitter, as I'm sure you already do. And, uh, and everyone have a have a good Thanksgiving and thanks for having me, you two. I'm a huge fan of yours. And and again, folks, everyone doesn't always have to agree. It's it's good that there is a back and forth, but there's huge respect and and discord is good. Discord and discussing things out is good. There, there doesn't have to be hate of one side or the other or you're you know you're wrong and i'm right you know jeremy's been dead right on beyond and deserves a lot of credit so i got mad respect for you guys and, and thanks again for having me all right thank you sir everybody make it a great day thanks.